my guest today, Mark Breslin, changed my life a little bit, uh, which he probably doesn't know. I was a, uh, a young stand-up comedian in Boston, and I was running comedy clubs all over New England, and I had like 50 one-nighters and comedy clubs all over the place. And I had my group of talent that I worked with who were great comedians. And, um, you know, back then I didn't have much. I didn't have a lot of money. All I had was, you know, the little bit of money I was making from these gigs. But I felt like I was in the business. And I felt like I was knowledgeable about the business. And I was knowledgeable about what made comedy great, although people would dispute that. It was the 80s. And... I was on an island, you know, Boston was an island. It was a great island, great comedy. But all I knew was my circle of people. I had heard about Mark Breslin through a few comedians that had come through town. And they did really, really well. Really well. And I had seen people come from the UK into Boston and they didn't do that well. I had seen people come from other countries and they didn't do that well. But these people did well. And I thought, my God, you know, wouldn't it be great to bring a lot of these guys down and do the circuit that I was working on? So I put in a call to um, the owner of the comedy club there in Toronto, Yuck Yucks. And the owner's name, the man who's sitting here before me, Mark Breslin. And I bought my ticket and I went up to Toronto. I'd never been to Canada before. And he had told me before I came up, listen, come up and I'll put on a showcase for you. And I'll put on all the best people and uh, you'll get to see them and see if uh, you can have them work in your circuit. As I sat down, I thought to myself, you know, I flew all the way up here. Who am I kidding? What comedians could they possibly have that are going to be equal to the comedians that we have in Boston? I mean, there's no fucking hope that anybody's going to go on stage and be like Steve Sweeney or like Bobcat Goldthwait or like Stephen Wright. I mean, it's impossible. I mean, this is Toronto, Canada. I mean, I, who, who knows what's up here? Well, one person knew what was up there. Mark Breslin. And he put on a showcase of probably 15 comedians. And... Every single comedian fucking destroyed, including Norm MacDonald, Wayne Fleming. And the guy who closed off the show was one of the most powerful acts I'd ever seen in my life. And it looked like, to me, it looked like the waitresses were wrapping up. And I don't know if they were giving checks or how it was, but... I'm thinking to myself, like, how is this last guy, after 14 comedians have gone on, how is it possible that this guy is ever going to do well? And it was Mike McDonald. I can't even begin to tell you what happened in that room that night because I don't even think I remembered the other people until I got back to my hotel after he got off stage. And he got like a partial standing ovation, which for a white comedian to get a standing ovation in the comedy club, you know, happens like 1% of 1% of the time. And I got out of the room and Mark looked at me and he said, what do you think? And I said, I just, I, I, I just can't believe what I just saw. I mean, it was just insane. The comedians here are like at, at, an, at another, another level. I mean, they're like, I think the comedians in Boston are great, but these comedians are just as good, if not better. They're all smart. They all have a unique angle. They all have great content. They have all of their own characters. And it opened my eyes to the fact that in business, you can be a big fish in a small pond and you can be the guy who operates and is successful in an area and you can get comfortable. And I was starting to get comfortable in Boston. I had all these rooms. I was dominating there with all these comedy clubs and places. And I could get anybody to work. 
including the comedians from Canada who came down and did really well. But when I went up to Toronto with your invite, where you invited me so graciously, I realized at that moment that I had to change a pattern of mine. I had to look further than my own backyard to do business.